Just how busy has it been in terms of sign-ups? There's a wait list to access, to start using Bing in this way. What's the reaction been like, Yusuf? Yeah, it's, uh, it's early days, but it's already, or early hours, I should say. Uh, there's a lot of sign-up interest. I'm getting a lot of emails from people who want to get in front of the wait list. But I think we've struck a nerve. I think we actually have um, kind of lit up people's imagination about what's possible with a new generation of search by infusing AI and chat and then getting to a place where you don't just get search results, but you can actually get answers to your questions. And I think it's struck a chord so far, so we're pretty excited about it. Struck a nerve is an interesting, interesting way of saying it because it feels like you struck a nerve, lit a fire underneath Google as well, because it's talking up, it's barred at the moment. Just discuss why there seems to be this sudden flurry of announcements, this race upon us for this generative AI within search. Uh, well, we've been working at it for a little while, and, um, and we've been excited about it. The thing that has motivated us is today there's like 10 billion queries that happen on any given day, and by our estimation, roughly half go unanswered. And that to us is a huge opportunity to sort of reinvent search. The other big dynamic is that AI in the last, really in the last number of months, has seen an inflection. Both the technical capability has gotten so much better, but the user experience, this idea of being able to chat, both the combination of those two things has really come together to make for a big opportunity. Yusuf, good afternoon to you. Busy day, as Caroline said. My question is, why now? You know, how ready is it? How convinced are you that being with AI is ready? Uh, I thought the timing was, was interesting. Yeah, as I mentioned, we've been working at it for a while. We've been at it for, for many months. We do feel like we're ready to go to the limited preview, and we're happy to have shipped in that state. And the reason for that is that in the evolution of the technology, there's only so much you can do in the lab. And then eventually you get to a place where you need to get that you know, end user feedback. You need to have that to come and improve the product. We feel confident today that we've got a, uh, we've got a wow idea in terms of how chat and search and the browser all come together. And, uh, and we've put in all of the, the good work to make sure it is a stable system. And so we're looking forward now to getting feedback and then improving. Yusuf, uh, OpenAI has a, a closed profit model. It's been licensing access to ChatGPT and other tools to developers. Is there any element of exclusivity in this arrangement with OpenAI that gives you an advantage over others in utilizing the underlying technology, either for search or other applications? Um, OpenAI can work with many companies. The opportunity we have is that we've worked with them together so, so closely. So this latest uh, AI model underneath the covers, which we announced today is a brand new one. This one is much more powerful than ChatGPT, and it's tuned for search. We've worked together to make that happen. That's pretty unique. Certainly other companies can work with the technology, but I think we have a, a great collaboration there. And we're, and we're making that across because we, that cloud of Azure, powers the back end. We've worked with them on the AI supercomputer, uh, and we work with them on the monetization model as well. So um, across the board, we have a very deep partnership. Talk to us about monetization. Sachin Adela, your CEO, is saying the technology is going to reshape basically pretty much every software category. What does that mean in terms of revenues, particularly when it comes to boosting search, for example? Well, the way to think about this is um, search is the uh, largest software category and soft, uh, uh, that's out there. Uh, advertising as a whole is a $600 billion business, and search is the predominant part of that. We have an opportunity to reshape that, to, to bring new value to people, as we talked about, in terms of being able to answer questions, but also new value to advertisers, who within that experience now can bring more targeted advertising and get better ROI. So the opportunity to improve that is, is something that we think is going to benefit everybody. It's interesting, we went to our own audience via uh, Twitter to ask them where they feel the winnings will be made. Now, not just talking about Google versus Baidu versus yourself at the moment, but China versus the US. And notably, interestingly, they didn't think, well, 38% thought that US technology companies were going to win the AI race, less likely China. But the robots win is actually where they came out with Yusuf. That speaks to a point of the power of artificial intelligence, and in, at that point, to re-correct itself, to improve upon itself. And to that end, I ask you about the concerns, the safety, the issues, the biases. How do you ensure that we're at the right place there to unleash this? Yeah, that's a great question, Caroline. That's top of mind for us. We, um, we have focused now for many years on responsible AI. We've put forth uh, principles and a framework. 
uh, and we've done a lot of engineering in that regard. We've learned a lot from our past releases. So what we released today has a bunch of guardrails and safety in there for things like hate speech and violence and self-harm. We, you know, we catch the queries when people type them in and we can determine before it ever gets to the model, or before it generates any content. We've trained the model specifically to catch these things. And then again, before answers come out. So we've done a lot of work. That said, you know, let's be clear, there's definitely bad actors out there that like to hack the system and we're gonna have to stay vigilant and on top of it. Um, we feel that today is an important part because part of how you get better and better is you have to go to market. You actually have to ship. You can't just solve these problems in a lab. And today is a, an important step to continue to improve on that for AI being something that can work for everybody.